held. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Now, is it right that Donald Trump took some of his inspiration from you and you had talked about Mexican rapists before he was talking about them? Um, yes, well, I've tried to push the immigration issue on a lot of Republican candidates. Um, a few in particular I had long conversations with um, and sent advanced copies of my book Adios America to. Donald Trump saw me on an interview on um, Telemundo Univision um, with Jorge Ramos the week before my book came out. I was on my way to the airport in Miami and I got an email from him asking for an advanced copy of my book. He has been good on this issue before, but my book has a lot of startling facts in it um, and it is carefully footnoted and documented and I think it is the first time there was a lot of discussion about a lot of the criminal cultures being launched on our country that the country just has no immunity to. We're used to our criminals being, you know, dumb, killing their spouses for insurance and leaving their DNA all over. A lot of the cultures that are coming into the country have all kinds of different criminal habits in addition to um, you know child rape gang rape massive Medicare frauds right. insurance frauds and we and, have no and, immunity to it and uh, just tell me this because I'm interested if you had contact with European counterparts who have think in a similar way to you the National Front in France for example are you talking to these guys or are you completely separate worlds um, no, I mean, I guess I, I, I wish Europe the best, used to like to go on vacation there, um, but I'm an American and I really care about America, and as we're finding out with the candidacy of Donald Trump, so do a lot of Americans. Right. Now look, I want to talk about the language and the tone of the campaign. Now you have used words uh, referring to Muslims or to people of Arab descent like raghead and camel jockey. Is that right? Well. It was a joke, and it was a funny joke, and right. people laughed. I think you really have to give right. the full context okay. of my remarks. No, but it's interesting that, that Donald Trump hasn't, I think, used these kinds of terms, has he? He has steered clear. Now, why do you think he doesn't use that language? Why he's short of, of, of the tone you would adopt? No, I think you're wrong. I think we use similar language, and we get attacked in the exact same way, which is completely lifting little snippets out and act, acting as if it was said with earnest anger, which is why I'm, two weeks after Trump announced, I brought um, a couple of my Hollywood friends who was speaking out to um, a group in L.A., and they were very skeptical of him. They walked out of the room saying they laughed more than they do at comedy clubs. He's extremely funny, and when you see these clips of him, or of me, um, where, you, where you're cutting off the laugh, you're cutting off the point, you're cutting off the joke, it's just one of the many right. ways the now, media lost. But look, it's really important, this, I mean, because I think in, 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 in much of Western society, people would avoid making jokes that use racially disparaging words, wouldn't they? And I'm just wondering whether you think it is acceptable or would be helpful to the Trump campaign if he ramped it up and started using racist language more overtly. I don't use racist language. Um, and well, wow, when you have to go back to a CPAC speech from 2006 and take right. two words from a joke out, it was a joke about political correctness um, and things going on in the world at that time. And okay. when 10,000 people in the room laugh, it's funny. Right. Um, but look, the point is, what Donald Trump is doing is not only, I mean, the big issue of his campaign is immigration, 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 but a lot of that has to do with, this is always the pushback. We try to talk about what's good for the country, what's good for the people living in the country, and the only response is to hear epithets. You're racist, you're a bigot. No, well, well you know, sorry, Donald Trump I, is challenging that too. No, I understand He's that. He's challenging that PC regime that people are really fed up with. No, but I'm actually, I, I'm getting at a slightly different point, which is, which which is whether the tone that you adopt, and which I think he has been slightly less adopting of, whether that tone is helpful to the, the cause that you're trying to promote. Whether, for example, using terms that disparage people or that are rather, you know, coarse in, their, in the way you characterise people, it's whether that makes those people more be better American citizens and better disposed to you and less happy to think of you getting killed in a terrorist accident terrorist outrage. Well, it's whether these things work or not. I call it funny. 
This is, this is, you know, the New York right. Times euphemism for funny is sophomoric. Um, other people find it funny, and apparently it is a good way to get the message out. And I'm an 11-time New York Times best-selling author and paid a lot to give speeches. People do listen to me. So, yeah, of course, I mean, look, Winston Churchill gave speeches. Of course, he was self-promoting. That's how you get yourself heard. And, you know, to be nitpicking a joke from okay. eight years ago just shows you the pushback okay. whenever we try to talk about immigration, which is driving down wages. I mean, every one of your topics tonight, it is a question of immigration, dumping more and more poor people, needy people, demanding people on the country who sometimes flip out and commis commit okay. mass murder. Oh, no, but we can't talk about no, that. No, 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 I've not said, ooh, sorry, I, I, just want to, I just want to be clear. I have not said you can't talk about immigration. I have no way would say that. Look, but let me we're just not. Follow. We're talking no. about about my language. Well, because that was the language that you used, not about the immigration. Let me just ask a different point about Tom Donald Trump, because there's one thing I really don't understand about him, which is the stuff he says about his daughter, Ivanka. Now, maybe you can help me, but it's stuff like this. Yeah, she's really something. What a beauty, that one. If I weren't happily married and, you know, her father, dot, 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 or... If she weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her, and references to her in Playboy magazine. What's going on there? What is this guy talking about? Oh, come on. He's just being funny, saying he has an attractive daughter. What's more this creepy is, and again, to again, that's a quote from many no, years ago. This is, maybe I'm just humorous. He's famous for dating models. Maybe I'm just no, humorous. No, self-deprecating. He's... What do you think He's is more creepy? He's famous for dating models. It's self-deprecating. He's saying, I have a beautiful daughter. A lot of fathers right. say that about their daughters. Well, you're against gay he marriage. He says it in a funny way. You're against gay marriage. What do you think is more creepy? Yes. Two gay men who loving each other, getting married, or a 69-year-old talking in that way about his own daughter? Which is more creepy? <laughs> He's not seriously talking about dating his daughter. You don't find oh it Oh my creepy. gosh, I thought we got our sense of humor from the British. You are being so humorless all of a sudden. This is a self-deprecating thing. Look, he's famous for dating models. He has, he has a wife who's 20 years younger than he is. He says his, his daughter is pretty. And again, you are nitpicking a joke rather than discussing the important issues of the day, which is Donald Trump is soaring in the polls because he's the only one talking about, the, about immigration, something the American people have been asking for for, for 40 years, and you better watch the debate tonight, because after this debate, there's going to be nobody else on stage, and Trump is going to have to start doing card tricks and or juggling Coulter. or something, and because Coulter. they're going to be wiped out. And Coulter, thank you very much for joining us.